much a focus on design concepts. Yes. Okay, so observer processes are a subclass of processes. Processes are, you know, sets of, of, of behavior operating over time. And um, observer processes are specifically behavior over time, which is involved in observing the model and gathering data, typically for output purposes. Um, so for the purposes of reporting, reporting to the modeler, typically, and where that reporting may be instantaneous in the form of a graph or a table that's sitting in front of you, or it may be just squirreling it away in a database and for later, later inspection. So an observer process is a type of process, but it's epiphenomenal. What I mean by epiphenomenal is that it's not modifying the behavior of things within the model. An observer process it, you can think of it as kind of a dead-end process. It doesn't change anything in the model. All it does is observe things. All it does is, is uh, collect information on things. It doesn't itself change the behavior of anything in the model. Does that make sense? So I can add these observer processes into this model um, without fear that it's going to change the model dynamics. But I want to plan generally around what these observer processes are. What is it I want to collect data on? Because that, among other things, it may affect what I put into the model. Like what processes am I simulating in the first place? Um, and you know, it, it may it may also have an impact on sort of how I represent um, how I represent the information I'm trying to gather. So we'll see. There's a couple ways to keep track of of agent changes of behavior, for example, or the current status of the model. We can kind of laboriously go through the population, counting people of a certain characteristic. Or every time someone changes state, we can keep track of the fact that they've changed state. Okay? And sometimes we have to decide between those ways of representing things. Um, so we'll, we'll be seeing that. Um, okay, so the, the second component of the ODD, um, is design concepts. Um, that's the, the middle D, um, the first D. So uh, here we're talking about considerations that need to be consciously thought through uh, while you're designing a model, while you're sort of deciding what goes into it. And these are quite specific to agent-based modeling. They're quite, um, there's some overlap with what we have to think about or what we would do well to think about in a classic stock and flow context. Um, but there's a lot here which is quite specifically agent-based. And part of it is kind of philosophy, and part of it is, is uh, it reflects the kind of richness of the modeling, uh, the agent-based modeling paradigm. So this is what was described in that sheet I circulated. And if anyone hasn't gotten that sheet, let me know and I'll, I'll send along a copy. I should really be sending out copies which have the source listed. It's from the book which sits in front of Todd there. Todd, could you raise the book a lot? Thank you. So it's, it's this book here which is the reference book for the course. Okay, so um, within, uh, within this space, the design concepts, it actually begins with somewhat somewhat uh, oddly perhaps um, in terms of the name, design concepts. Where did the principles come from in underlying this model? I mean, where did this model come from? What, what was it motivated by the, the, the representation of certain things? Did it come from other models that are published? Was it stimulated by certain papers? Basically, um, identify any sources of inspiration for the models, a matter of documentation. But then it gets into certain considerations that you need to go through in your mind. Um, the first of them is, is uh, really emphasized within agent-based modeling, and that's the issue of emergence. To what, deg to what degree are the results that we're seeking to observe um, arising naturally out of a myriad of interactions, interactions between agents and agents in its own state over time, and to what degree are these pre-programmed? To what degree are we kind of presupposing the results we're seeing, and to what degree are they are they emerging in a kind of organic way out of a large number of different uh, diverse interactions. Within agent-based modeling, there's a conviction that wherever you can, it's best to try to aspire to capturing phenomena as emergent behavior rather than kind of programming into the model. So there's a real hesitation towards simply, for example, 
example, um, putting into a model, let's say, um, so uh, 12, 13 years ago, I was working in the tobacco related modeling area. And we had a quite articulated system dynamics model uh, in, in tobacco where we had uh, rates of uptake, initiation of smoking, cessation, and relapse of smoking over age and over. Um, it, and according to different aspects of heterogeneity. We had this in the model, um, and generally speaking, it reflected the fact that, uh, or if you looked at the rates there, you know, people tended to uptake in youth. There was a, a, a span of a couple of years that were particularly key um, in the teenage years, typically, and then it tended to drop off. If, if you weren't a smoker by 21, 22, you're very unlikely to become a smoker. Up and it was even earlier cut off than that. Similarly, cessation rates, what do you think they did over time? Do they start high and go low, or what is cessation? Your chance of, of quitting smoking in a given year of your life, do you think that goes up or down or stays the same with age? Okay, down. And uh, so you would think it might go down because. Okay, so there are some effects um, in the 20s where you see that. People who started smoking then decided, well, <laughs> maybe this isn't so good an idea. You know, um, it seemed good at the time, but, but I'm going to change my mind. But what you also see is later in life, it starts to rise. And, that, and that's, a relate, that's presumably reflecting health issues um, that come about because of it. Um, it's also reflecting changes in your social context um, that may be occurring. So you're seeing your friends who are smokers struggling with health problems of their own. It's not just your own. Um, and similarly, relapse rates um, uh, will differ over time, although it's less obvious. So, you know, uh, we program those rates in and just kind of put them into the model. Within an agent-based model and context, there'd be a real push to sort of say, well, to what degree are these representative? Are they emerging from some underlying factors that you really want to capture? For example, cessation rates may be reflective later in life of, of health concerns. Maybe you want to start with those and just have the cessation emerge from that um, rather than being pre-programmed in, you know, what the likelihood is. Uh, similarly, if you over time have higher rates of risk of diabetes by age, you know, maybe that's a reflection of some accumulation process that itself needs to be reflected. So the next thing is adaptation. We'll talk about that sensing objectives, learning, prediction, interacting, stochastics, and observers. So I'm just going to go through a subset of these right now. Uh, we started with um, emergency.